father was a great man. A hero, so they say. Sometimes the world doesn't need another hero. Sometimes what it needs is a monster. You. The Sultan is preparing for battle and requires 1,000 boys for his army, including your son. Run to your mother. Look away! You can't protect us. I'll find a way. been waiting an eternity for a man of your strength to arrive. Welcome to your life. What is it you are seeking? I want the power to destroy my enemies and save my family. There's no turning back. Drink Dracula. Welcome to your life. What's happening to you? I'm the thing men fear. Not a ghost. Something else. A find you. I see the devil inside him! Do you think you are alive because you can fight? Because of what I did to save you! The world. Never forget who I am. I got an unusual number of requests to review this trailer. And I think the fact that this trailer is connecting so well, not just with Dracula fans, but also seemingly fans of vampire and gothic stories in general, is a very good sign for both the producers and Luke Evans, who's the star here. And the fact that Luke Evans was cast in this role is fascinating. And if he's able to succeed in it, it's going to mean a lot more than uh, just uh, a good note for his career, and I'll get to that in a moment. But first, let's talk. Let's talk about this connection with the fan base. Uh, first off, I think that the producers of *I Frankenstein* and Aaron Eckhart would say, "Careful, Dracula Untold. Just because your trailer gets a lot of attention doesn't mean people are going to show up at the theater." Although I think to counter that, fans would say that. I, Frankenstein, didn't really show up at the theater either, in terms of quality at least. Uh, but as you might recall, when that trailer first came out for I, Frankenstein, a lot of people paid attention to that as well. But somewhere along the way, it lost everyone. And I'm curious, I'm very curious to see what happens with Dracula Untold, how it, how its story develops, its business story. Uh, so we'll see if, you know, this initial um, interest stays and increases, or if it slowly fades away as it did with I, Frankenstein. Now, I have great respect for the fact that people are excited about this trailer, but I didn't quite connect with it, and I have two very big problems with it. Uh, first off, I don't like the overall murky uh, palette that is so prevalent in this genre, and I don't understand why they always go here. It doesn't really work out, and I don't think it really connects with audiences, and it's really kind of like a red flag for cheapness. And maybe it comes from cheapness. Maybe the, the gray palette uh, compensates for a small special effects budget. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Uh, but I don't like it, it's off-putting to me, and I'm just, my brain at this point has been trained to, to be like, oh, great palette, cheap movie. So I think that's something I feel is, uh, is off-putting to me about the trailer. The other thing I don't like, and that I've seen a few of you mention this as well, is that this seems to be the male version of Angelina Jolie's Maleficent. We have yet another misunderstood villain. This villain isn't really a villain, they're an anti-hero. They're trying to do good, and they, you know, they either made a bad decision or they sacrifice themselves. Sometimes you don't always do good by doing the right thing. That's an interesting idea, and I think this would be an interest, more interesting twist on Dracula if Maleficent hadn't just explored this very same thing. Also, as some people, I mean, I was very happy with the way Maleficent turned out. Maybe I'll be happy with the way Dracula Untold turns out. But as many people have expressed, I would like to see a movie which just embraces 
villainy. Uh, I think that's one of the things that really made Breaking Bad work so well. I mean, they humanized their villain, and they showed you why, why he was making the decisions he made, but Walter White was a villain through and through, and uh, that compelling um, case uh, character study was fascinating to watch, and I would love to see that kind of storytelling applied to a movie villain, and maybe eventually we'll get that, but so far the popular thing to do these days is to talk about how villains are really the good guys, uh, and that, that I think that creates a confusing situation overall, and I think in the long run maybe isn't so healthy for the battle of good and evil, because then what battle are we talking about here? The battle of, uh, you know, um, you know, misunderstandings? Is that what's going on instead? Uh, not quite as uh, attention-getting as good versus evil. So those are the two things I don't like so much about the trailer. What do I like about it? Well, I really like some of the aspects uh, of the vampire that they, they show here. Uh, the bat, of course, obviously, when it has the bat fist into the ground, that's pretty cool. Although, think of all the bats who had to sacrifice their lives for that cool moment for Dracula. Uh, if whoever was in the front of that fist, they didn't make it out. Uh, or unless they're like supernatural bats, who knows? But uh, that's what I was thinking. I was like, there's gonna be a lot of squashed dead bats on the floor there. Uh, but I liked, you know, kind of, there was this one, you know, one vampire, and he passes it on to Dracula, the, you know, the vampire strain. I thought that was an interesting choice. Um, and I like the idea of the Sultan, uh, you know, I, th I think that's Dominic Cooper, of course, otherwise, a.k.a. Tony Stark's dad, also in uh, that, um, uh, uh, the Devil's Double, uh, that, that story about Saddam Hussein's son. Uh, so, yeah, it's one of the recent films that he did as well. Uh, although, maybe it would be nice to have some actual Middle Eastern actors in there, but eh, whatever, I digress. Uh, I don't think this movie is, as, you know, uh, historically accurate as one might maybe uh, maybe hope, but, you know, the way this is connecting, again, that doesn't seem to be very high up on people's uh, checklist for what they're looking for here. So, I, I, I'm curious. I think maybe it's also benefiting from a little bit of a Game of thrones -y feel. Uh, that's definitely there as well, although Game of Thrones has better production values than in this movie, uh, which is never a good sign for a movie. And now let's talk about Luke Evans. I promised you uh, a little bit of discussion on his casting here. Now you might not be aware of this because Luke Evans downplays this, uh, at least today. But when he started his career, he was very proud of the fact that he was a gay actor who wasn't in the closet. He was openly gay and he, you know, he's quoted as saying it did not affect his career. Uh, but maybe he feels that it did to some degree because he doesn't really talk about it anymore. And there's also been some rumors lately of him dating uh, a woman. Uh, and I don't know if maybe that's just a mis misunder talk about misunderstandings or if maybe he's, you know, step, stepping back a little bit from being so openly out because he, feel it is have, he feels it is having an effect on his career. Uh, but he's just come off Fast and, Furious since Fast and Furious 6 where he was the villain, and now, of course, he's the lead here. And he's not playing a gay character. So if a gay actor, who I guess at this point is somewhat open, can succeed in a role, a genre role like this as a straight character, uh, that's a very interesting development for Hollywood and for audiences, that audiences would accept him, um, you know, in the role. And maybe he'll, the next step will be uh, an openly gay character in a genre film that's accepted. I mean, we'll have to see uh, what's, what lies in store, but this would be a promising first step. Although I think Luke Evans, I'm not sure how he feels about, you know, coming out in relation to this movie, uh, because as I said, he doesn't really discuss it anymore. Uh, but I'm curious, what do you think? Are you aware of, um, you know, that Luke Evans is, uh, is gay? Uh, does, it, does it change how you feel about him, uh, him as an actor? Uh, also, does it make you more or less excited for this movie? Also, why, does, why do you connect to this trailer? What, what's exciting to you about it? I mean, you've heard why it didn't quite work for me, but as I said, I acknowledge that it's working for a number of people, so I'd really love to hear below why you're so intrigued by Dracula untold. Uh, please write your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for everybody who asked me for your for a trailer review. I really appreciate that when you see trailers that you're excited about, you think of me, and I try to get these up as fast as possible. There was a little bit of confusion with this trailer about when it was okay to post and not, uh, but I'm glad that I've been able to post it and discuss it with you. All right, thank you so much, and you can check out some more episodes right now.